Hey, what's up? Welcome back. In this episode, you're going to learn about checkout, Stripe checkout, and fulfillment. What we're going to start doing is keeping track of which of those customers have bought which products, and we're going to do that in the database when we receive a webhook notification telling us that Stripe checkout has succeeded. So the first thing we want to do is start modeling what this is going to look like. So in the database, we're gonna have a new concept called a customer. So we're gonna say Rails generate model customer. That's gonna have a Stripe ID. It also is gonna have an email address. And each customer is gonna be related directly to a store that they bought from. We could make this directly related to the user, but I think in the future, if we wanted to have multiple stores, we would wanna segment out certain customers that bought at some stores with customers that bought at other stores. This customer model might also someday become something that is device authenticatable where a customer can log back in and see their purchases. But for now, each time someone goes through checkout, we're just creating a brand new customer for them and we're not handling any sort of authentication of an existing customer. So we're gonna generate this model for a customer. Now let's think a little bit about these fields and what we might want to do with them. I think we wanna ensure that every single customer definitely has an email address. But I could see a case for some reason if you have a friend that you wanted to you know, give your ebook to, you could just give them um, access by creating a customer without a Stripe ID and then saying that this customer is somehow associated with uh, some sort of product. So we're gonna create this table. We also want to ensure that there is some sort of uniqueness between a customer, their Stripe ID, and the store ID, I believe. Um, so that we don't have the same email address in there multiple times for the same store. So let's say that we are going to add an index on the customers table for the relationship between the store ID and the email address. We wanna make sure that that is unique. All right, we'll migrate the database and jump into the customer model. And inside of the customer model, we're gonna say validates that the store ID is unique in the scope of the email address, right? That's this, the same thing that we just created at the database layer. Now we wanna add that validation at the model layer. Now that we have a customer, let's keep track of what they purchased. So we're gonna say Rails G model customer product. I think this is how we wanna track it. We could also call this the order model or the purchase model or something. This is gonna be the reference to the customer and the reference to the product. And we're also gonna keep track of the checkout session ID. That's gonna be the Stripe checkout session ID. We might even wanna keep a few other just denormalized things here, but for now, I think that's gonna be a great, a great start. So we're gonna have a customer product, yeah. All right, so let's open this up. And one of the, uh, another index that we wanna add is going to be for the combination of all three of these. So we want to ensure that there is a unique customer ID and product ID and checkout session ID. The reason is that I could see someone coming back and repurchasing the same product multiple times, but each time they purchase, it should have a unique session ID. So let's add that validation there. Okay, I think that's a good start. So we'll say Rails DB migrate and then we'll jump into that customer product. Okay, let's see. Uh, the index name is too long. Since the name is too long, we gotta go give this thing a specific name. So we're gonna open this up and say that the name for this index is just like customer product session index. Rails DB migrate. And we are good. So let's open the customer product and this customer now belongs, or I'm sorry, the customer product belongs to a customer. And so the customer now has many customer products and it also has many products through customer products. Similarly, on the product side, we wanna say that a product has many customer products and has many customers through customer products. That gives us this many-to-many -many relationship between customers and the products that they might purchase. All right, let's jump into the uh, webhook handler here and let's handle the uh, checkout session.completed event. And we're gonna say handle checkout session completed, handle checkout session completed. And here the session is gonna be event.data.object, but by default, 
when we receive the webhook notification about the checkout session, it's not gonna have the line items. So what we wanna do is re-retrieve that checkout session. So we're gonna say stripe checkout session.retrieve. And we're gonna pass in the ID of the checkout session. And we're also gonna pass in expand for the line items of the checkout session. That is going to be our first argument. Then the second argument is we need to have the Stripe account that the checkout session is related to. So we're gonna pass that down next. Finally, we're gonna be able to like create all of these intermediate objects. So the first thing we wanna do is create a customer if it does not already exist. So let's say customer dot find or initialize by their Stripe ID, which is gonna be this checkout session customer and their store ID, which, where are we gonna find the store ID? So the store ID should be available on the product, which we're gonna find by, yeah. So product.find by the Stripe ID, which should be session.lineitems.data0.price.product. So that should give us the product back. The store ID should be product dot store ID, I think. Let's check out the product model and just make sure that we have that. Okay, so it does not, the product is not directly related to a store. So a product has one store through the user model. So this is gonna be, maybe we'll just pass in reference to the store directly. Okay, so find or initialize the customer by that. Then we wanna set their email up to be the session customer details dot email. And then we're gonna save the customer. Now, after the customer was saved, then we want to create a customer product. So we're gonna say customer product dot create, uh, bang, and this is gonna be the customer, the product, and the checkout session ID, which is gonna be the sessions ID. This will track sort of like every single product that that specific customer buys. So we're kind of just like looking up the customer um, or upserting the customer, basically. And then after we have upserted the customer, we're gonna create this product reference. So let's go over here. Also notice this is kind of fun, right? As we're testing, a bunch of money is flowing into our payments balance. Um, recall that we were building out this creator platform. Um, and this is what a store might look like. Let's see, test.lvh.me. Okay, so let's go buy a product. We're gonna buy um, build and learn. So we click on that link, we're brought to this page, test at example.com. Okay. Now the webhook handler should be processing that checkout.session.completed event and redirecting us back. So let's take a look in the logs, in the server logs and see how everything is going. It looks like those events are flowing through just fine. Process, look at that, thank you. It's on the way, we were redirected back to this checkout page. Now, if we open up Rails console, we can see um, customer.count. We have one customer, so customer.last, and they have their Stripe customer ID in there. They've got their email address. We also have a store ID in here, so we know which customer or which store this customer purchased from. So that is all really cool. Now let's look at this customer's um, products. So now we see the products that that customer has purchased. So here's one of those products. So that is pretty neat. Uh, okay, so at this point we should be automating, at least automating the association between a given customer and their product. Now, I think what we might wanna do now is sort of like email the customer uh, a link to where they can download the product. So we're, we're back to this page. We have uh, successfully received payment. Um, in fact, we can double check that too and say like, if session.status does not equal uh, paid, then return. If the payment status, payment status, if the payment status is not paid, then return. So checkout session payment status should be Let's see, we can re-retrieve this because on our customer.last.customerproducts, we have the checkout session ID. We can say stripe checkout session.retrieve. Pass, we also need to pass in the stripe header, which is gonna be stripe account. And that is gonna be like 
store dot find one or account dot first dot stripe ID. And when we retrieve this, there is going to be a payment status and that payment status is paid. If we're using any of the like sort of delayed notification payment methods, like it, for instance, if we wanted to enable an ACH payment, maybe our digital download is a course, it's $2,000 to download the course and the course comes with PDFs and maybe videos and some other things, then we might offer folks to be able to pay with ACH. ACH is delayed notification. That means we won't immediately know whether or not that worked. And so if we want to support delayed notification payments, then we also need to handle uh, checkout session uh, async payment succeeded. And we're gonna handle that event in the same exact way. So handle checkout session completed. Um, now that we're checking to see that the payment status is paid, as long as it's paid, we'll continue forward. Um, like finding the, looking up the product and or the customer and creating this association here. Okay, so now what we can do is we can go back through, let's go back through the flow just one more time to test it out. And we're gonna buy the same product. It's fine that we're going through. Let's do another email, example.com. All right, we're redirected back. Now we should see a new customer.last. We see a new customer was added to the database. Now we have two customers, customer product.last. Yep, so we can see another, another relationship there between the customer and the product. So this, is, this whole flow is now working. We're able to create customers in the database when they purchase products. The next thing I wanted to do was uh, let's make a way that we can see who the customers are. So we're gonna say Rails G controller customers, and it's gonna have an index. Uh, it's gonna have a show probably, and that will give us probably more than enough. Go to routes, add resources, customers. In the customers controller, we'll say customers is current user.store.customers. Show at customer is current user.store.customers.find. Okay, that should be just fine. Now let's go to the customers index. And here we're gonna have some table. But first we'll grab our little header. Okay, and then we'll go to Tailwind UI, we'll grab a table. So we're gonna copy this table here, which looks very much like a customer table. All right, I, every time I click, sometimes when I click that, it doesn't seem to work. Okay, so now this is gonna be called customers. All the customers who have bought from your store. All right, and then we'll iterate over each of the customers. And for each customer, we want to print out at least their email address. So let's do that here. All right, we can also do their, their Stripe customer ID, customer.stripe ID. That's probably good. And we could make that a link to their Stripe account. Um, actually, since we're using Custom Connect, we wouldn't have a way to link to the dashboard or anything. So this is gonna be just fine. So now we should have a slash customers view, uh, undefined method customers for store. So let's go to the store and a store should has many customers. Oh, actually, so a store has, ooh, this is good. Yeah, okay, so it's gonna be has many customers through products, because products also has one store. Okay, no, customer, yeah. Products has customers, so we should be able to get two customers through the store. All right, so here's the list of our customers. That's pretty neat. Um, we don't need this add user button. We also don't need uh, some of this stuff at the very top, so we're just gonna go to the customers index and clean things up just a little bit. So, we'll 
We'll remove these. All right, we can actually remove this whole header. Let's actually make this a link to view the customer. So we'll say this is gonna be the customer path for a customer. And instead of edit, we're gonna say view. And we'll make that bring us to the customer show page. So then on the customer show page, we'll just say, this is the customer. Um, what do we want to show on the show page? Well, here we can put out their customer.email as the header. And then I think it might be nice to show a table with all of the products that they purchased. So let's copy this, drop it in. And then here, what we can do is we can now iterate over their products. List of all the products this customer has purchased. Uh, all right. And here we're gonna iterate over at customer.products.each do product. And we'll just put out the name of the product. Product.name. Let's see how that looks. Uh, no such customer email, so this should be at customer. Okay, test at example.com, a list of the products that, the, that this customer purchased. This is the ebook that they purchased, and we can now remove title, email, role. Um, this is actually just email, or this is the name of the product. And now we can remove member and the link at the end. So right now it's really just a table with one thing in it, but <laughs> eventually we could add more to this. Uh, all right, let's go also add a menu item. So we're gonna go to application helper and add this as a menu item. Customers. Let's clean this up. While we're here, this should all just be paths, products, path, accounts, path. Okay, so now, of course I broke something. All right, now we have customers. So now we have this link and we can see the list of customers. Now if someone else goes to our store and they decide to pay and maybe they're gonna buy the Productive Rails book and they come over here and they enter in their password as new customer at example.com. Maybe they are gonna buy with a card that is going to also skip the balance. That would be nice. Skip balance. All right. Okay, let's click on pay. Now we should get a new customer object. We should also have a new purchase uh, or a customer product in the, data, in the database. Uh, and we should also see this money, this $100 should hit our available balance immediately and be available on the dashboard. So let's go over to our dashboard here, refresh. Now we see this new customer showed up. That's pretty cool. We may wanna reorder this so the newest customers appear at the top. But now in our dashboard, we also see this $100 minus fees is immediately available and we can click on payout. That will move it down to our financial account balance um, immediately or just after a second here. So we see 3175 is now 128. So that's pretty sweet. Okay, so now we have um, the ability to track down specific customers and their purchases. So I think that is a pretty good stopping point for fulfillment. Uh, thanks so much for watching and we will see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.